uh, what has befallen uh, the Christian church in Afghanistan. There are brothers and sisters. We need to pray for them and we need to find ways that we can really support them and uh, pray for their support. Um, when we know from the Apostle Paul and Corinthians that when one part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. And God has given us, Jesus has given us a, a vision for the world. And my prayer is that um, God's going to do amazing things in that country. So I want to say a couple of things. We looked at Daniel recently, and those of you that will remember Daniel will remember that Daniel is a young man sent into exile and into Babylon. That must have been a tremendously difficult experience. Babylon was in no way, shape or form a country with Western values. It was ruled over by Nebuchadnezzar, you might say an evil king. And this is what Jeremiah prophesied. He prophesied many things to Israel who refused to repent. They trusted like a superstitious way, the temple, they trusted in that instead of relationship with God. And so judgment came. Judgment came through a new civilization, the civilization of Babylon who conquered Jerusalem and eventually um, destroyed it. But this is what Jeremiah says in, 20, in, in, in Jeremiah 27 verse 6. And I think Daniel knew this. My servant Nebuchadnezzar and I think if we're going to look at the broader sweep of history, um, we, we have to take account for God's sovereignty. I in no way um, agree with um, what governments have done by withdrawing the few troops that were there to support um, that nation. But nevertheless, this is what's happened. And I can't see it other than through the lens of God's sovereignty and through the lens of the Bible and what God has done in the past. You know, many years ago when Mao came to power, um, all the Christian churches were closed. Christian evangelists and Western churches had to leave. And then, um, you know, 30 or 40 years later, when the uh, Mao had, you know, had died, when the Western church came back into China, they began to look at China and they were, they were utterly shocked. Tens of millions of people had become Christians without Western help. Can you, can you believe it? Without the help of the West. And sometimes I think, you know, that the one essential requirement for God to use us in any way, shape or form, is that we place no reliance on the flesh. And, and I, I'm saying that because that's what happened in China. And China is again, uh, the persecution is being increased. And that is true of Afghanistan. And that is not in any way as a Western pastor living in this much easier life, quite frankly, um, to be able to say, to what's going on over there to diminish the pain and suffering that they're feeling. One of the pastors, you know, I have two young girls. His 14-year-old daughter was just abducted by the Taliban. These kinds of stories, although not verifiable, are quite in line with the way that the Taliban work, quite in line with their theology of Islam and what they believe. And um, so... So God has mercy on whom he'll have mercy. That's what uh, Romans chapter 9 says. And I think there's something about the sovereignty of God in Afghanistan. There's something that we can pray for that God will do. As he used the Chinese Christians, so he will do something amazing in that nation. But we still have our role. And our role is to pray and that where we can make connections in that country... We should. My prayer is that many Christian leaders will go and, and speak to the Taliban leaders uh, from the West, from the East, um, and, and just sit down and talk and uh, be with them and listen to them and so on, because no one ever comes to Christ. My prayer is that the supernatural intervention of God will happen. Now, we looked at Daniel. 
one of the things that Daniel, Mishrach, Shadrach and Abednego, the thing that they all did, and it's the first six chapters really of Daniel before we go into his more personal diary, what did, they, what did he do? They refused to bend or to diminish who God is. And I loved the, the, the answer of Mishrach, Shadrach and Abednego when King Nebuchadnezzar, who's already been touched once by Daniel interpreting a dream, is then builds this huge 90 foot tower of himself and everybody has to worship. And apart from Mishrach, Shadrach and Abednego say no. And they say to King Nebuchadnezzar, they treat him respectfully for one thing. They don't shout at him. They don't call him some evil narcissist. They treat him respectfully as a king. And they say, King Nebuchadnezzar, if you throw us into the fiery furnace, God will protect us. But even if he doesn't, we cannot bow down to that statue. Now, that's the answer um, for us as Christians living in the West or Christians anywhere. The moment we diminish what we believe. You see, there has to be something about our faith in Jesus Christ. There has to be something. There has to be some innermost commitment, innermost uh, resolution, innermost beliefs that we stand for and that are utterly unassailable. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what people threaten. It doesn't matter what people will try and do to us. We say, no, we believe Jesus Christ is God. He is the only way to God. He is a loving father in heaven as, who sent his son Jesus to die and rise again. We have to have a conviction of belief that whatever happens, we will not bow down. Now I'm saying those things because I presuppose in the West many times the church is bowing down to the culture. It refuses to stand up and speak authoritatively and truthfully. But Daniel did. And my perception is from the, from the persecuted church, they do as well despite the price and the cost. And then God sends his anointing. He sent his anointing on Daniel and he supernaturally intervened. He sent his anointing to Mishrach, Shadrach and Abednego and he supernaturally intervened. When we believe, when we are put to the test, when we are willing to stand, God's presence and anointing comes in. But God forbid we bow down to the culture and we say, well, this is all right. This is, we'll normalize this as part of our faith. Then we cannot expect God to um, back us up um, or to deliver us with his supernatural activity. So God is sovereign. That does not mean we do not help and pray for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan or belittle in any way the persecution and the troubles that they are going through. Secondly, we must pray for them. We must find ways of, of trying to help them and pray for them. One of which my prayer is that, that Christian leaders, you know, as, as this little church in Bryant, but I'd love to go and just sit in front of those people and just present to them a, a, a Christianity that is not political, that is not politicized, just a simple believer in Jesus Christ. And my prayer is the Taliban are gonna meet these simple believers and that the supernatural activity of God will heal their children, will soften their hearts, that they will believe and see the living God. That's our prayer. That's what we're to pray um, for these people. And that we're to know that God is greater. That's what Daniel shows us. Daniel is one of the few times in the Old Testament where we see the mission of God. I've said Jonah is, is one of the others, but Daniel by himself with his friends is carted off to a foreign land with foreign values and foreign gods. Everything looks impossible. And yet Jeremiah says, Nebuchadnezzar is my servant. The Taliban is my servant. If the Taliban have taken Afghanistan, they are the servants of God. Nothing. Every kingdom, we know this, and I'm going to close here, but every kingdom finishes. See the British Empire dissipated or the Roman Empire, the Greek Empire, everybody. And they, 
They have these great grandiose plans and great schemes, but the only kingdom that will last forever and ever is the kingdom of our God. And Daniel shows that more than clearly. So they're my few words, inadequate words really for Afghanistan. It's been on my mind and my heart. We're praying every morning for them at our early morning prayer meetings. And, it, and, and it's kind of touched me really. Um, it's touched me. I can't quite explain why um, that country, um, but, but I, I've, I just feel a love for that country. I want us all to pray for it and to understand that the arm of the flesh counts for nothing.